What's the deal with Google releasing Android 14 QPR1 Beta 1 right before the official stable Android 14 release? Well, it seems really stupid to us, but there are a few cool things that you need to know about, so here goes. A quick PSA first before we dive in, no, this is not the stable Android 14 release. Effectively, this is the beta for the next Pixel feature drop, which is exclusive to Google's own smartphones, which should be sometime in December, at least based upon the three month cycle between these Pixel exclusive updates. This means that while this is technically based on the stable Android 14 build, a lot of these features are not coming right at launch of that specific Android build. They'll come later, unless Google does decide to merge them next month or sometime when the Pixel 8 series launched. Most importantly, you should opt out of the Android beta program now before the QPR1 OTA reaches your device or before installing or sideloading this update because when the Android 14 stable does release, you'll have to downgrade and that may mean you lose certain files and features. Only stay on the beta if you're happy with this preview software. What does this mean for you though? Well, probably not a great deal, but there are a few things hinted at and unearthed here that we think you need to know about. One feature we are excited about is the ability to potentially use Find My Phone even when your phone is powered off. Currently, the phone it's actually needs to be powered on and connected to the Find My network and Wi-Fi to be located. This new functionality could use low power Bluetooth to help locate your phone, even if it has been powered down or maybe after the battery itself dies. Just how it will work isn't exactly clear to us, but that's our best guess so far. Another feature is being able to force full screen on apps such as Instagram when using tablets or foldables. That looks like it's coming with this update too. Find Finally, we won't have to deal with screen borders as in QPR1. There are huge hints that you'll be able to force a specific aspect ratio and override the default settings in apps like Instagram, as I mentioned. For each application, you can choose the following aspect ratios, things like the app default, full screen, half screen, which is gonna be useful for foldables and tablets, device aspect ratios, and the 16 by nine, four by three, and three by two options. There are downsides here though, as some UIs may be stretched and look weird on devices like the Pixel tablet, but it does get rid of that annoying letterboxing potentially once and for all. Another little but notable or somewhat notable change for the Pixel Fold is that in QPR1, there's an option or setting that changes how apps are handled when you close the display. There's a stay unlocked on full toggle that can be appear under settings and display. The description for the feature says that it keeps the front display unlocked when the device is folded until screen timeout. In other words, when you close the pixel fold, the outer screen will only turn off after a few seconds or minutes of inactivity, depending on what you've set as a screen timeout in the settings application. Google also looks to be working on a floating search bar for the default pixel launcher. This would revamp how you interact with the existing universal search bar, which is found on your home screen. It's actually hidden in QPR1, but this search bar looks or oh, looks like a pill shape icon that's probably more reminiscent of the quick settings section. And it will be more reachable when in the app drawer and it'll be more visible in the app switcher. This will just live just above your keyboard as well when you are in that app drawer view, if you do have the keyboard appearing here as well and using app searches. It might not make it to the full release, but it's a big deal as Google embeds the search widget in more areas of Android or at least the Android interface on Pixel phones. Repair mode is also something that you'll hopefully never need, but it is a mode that you can enable if you, your Pixel needs some attention from a certified repair store or service provider. It creates a secure environment so that all of your personal information, photos and on-device files are away from prying eyes, but still allows repair technicians to test and fix any problems with your device without any leaking or leaking of personal information or files themselves. There's also a hidden search on-screen option that could revive a long lost now on tap feature, if you remember that, that allowed you to search your screen and pull things based upon screen context. The setting is also currently hidden, but we managed to make it appear under settings, system, navigation mode, and the gesture navigation set. Section. Unfortunately, this feature currently doesn't work at all. A separate flag needs to be toggled so that long pressing on the bottom bar does anything at all. But even if that flag is enabled, screen search still doesn't work effectively, but it could be an extension of the floating search widget that we I mentioned previously with the Pixel launcher. And it's something that we hope to see fleshed out again as this beta progresses. There are also a few more hidden functions and features unearthed by Android Authorities contributor and channel friend, Michelle Rahman. So go check that out via his 
Twitter link down in the description below. A few of these findings might not make it, as I mentioned, to the full release, but it gives hints of things that we could see in early December when devices are updated to the stable Android 14 and then this particular stable update when it goes from the beta to the stable channel. It's all really confusing. There is some things though here in QPR1 that you can access right away. There is a battery information and cycle count is now visible here for the first time in Android, who think in this particular build. I think I have actually been missing out on this one as it's on iOS for a long time. At least you do have a battery health metric over there on iPhones. But to enable this or to see this, go to settings about phone and battery information, and you'll be able to see the exact manner and factoring date of your phone plus the battery cycle count. That means it was 100 to 0% and then back up again. There is a little disclaimer here that mentions that the cycle count itself when you receive a new phone might not be set to zero on your first use, which is pretty interesting as sometimes diagnostic need to be done before devices end up shipping out of the factory. The UI itself has also had a few neat little changes to the wallpaper and style application with a little effect that you'll see when you actually tap to change your wallpaper. And this is reminiscent of the unlock animation. It looks like sparkly or almost like spacified. There's also another new lock screen clock here, which brings the total to nine, and that will be 18 if you include that small version. It's very art deco in its style with a tile overlay that with features various color hues depending on your wallpaper or color palette choices. This also also works with the small and full screen look as I mentioned and it's another extra option that we hope to see Google expand upon as time progresses. And finally, you might also notice the added borders in the quick settings panel when you start editing the quick toggle tile layout. This is another inconsequential alteration, but notable nonetheless, and it's all, the, all part of Google's attempt to tie everything better together, which is something we definitely like to see more of. And basically that's Android 14 QPR1, which as I know, is not the stable release version. It's super confusing and slightly annoying a little bit. We don't know when or why Google has done it, but they've done it this way around and yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully though, you've learned something new and you've found out some features coming that may interest you. Cheers for watching though, and I will catch you in the next one.